Hi guys, welcome back to Ice Dries. In this video, we're going to cover some summer colors. Uh, we're going to do a blue t-shirt and we're going to do a sunset inspired shirt. I'll make sure to walk you through every step you need to know to ice dye these tees. Let's get started with what we'll need to dye these shirts. Let's start off with the shirts. I use all style brand t-shirts. We're using a large and an extra large short sleeve today, along with some Gildan brand white socks. Both of these will be 100% cotton, which I highly recommend for this style of dyeing. This is due to the fact that we use powder reactive dyes that are specific to cotton, so it's going to be really important that you use 100% cotton garments. Next up are our dyes. Cobalt will be our first shirt. Then we have sea glass, cardinal red, and chocolate brown, all for our second shirt. All these dyes are going to be by Dharma Trading Co. Most importantly, we have a face mask. This will protect your lungs from any dye that makes it in into the air, so please use one. Next up is ice, because we will be ice dyeing these shirts. We have two sizes, one small and one large. Just make sure this is clear ice. You can make it in freezer trays or you can buy it from the store in five pound bags. Next is our soda ash mixture. This is something you'll mix up at home. You can purchase soda ash on Amazon, sometimes called washing soda. You'll mix up one cup of soda ash to one gallon of warm water and you'll have your mix. Next is aluminum foil, the cheapest you can find. We'll use it to make a bunch of these little forms. Okay, we're almost done. You'll need a teaspoon like this. Then some gloves, heavy duty kitchen ones, and also lighter duty latex ones. The lighter duty ones are optional. Last is soap. I use Dharma textile detergent and also regular Dawn dish soap as a pre-wash. Okay, now to quickly go over our bin setup, we have a Rubbermaid 10 gallon bin with a lid, along with some old dye containers. You can also use small cups. We just need something to prop up these wire bins that we're going to use for dyeing the shirts. Uh, I got these from Amazon. I'll include the link below. We're just going to make sure to cover one side of the basket with foil because we're going to do two different colors and we don't want them to bleed into each other. Alright, that is it for our setup. Now we're ready for step one. Okay, so you're going to want to put on those heavy duty cleaning gloves now because when you go to dump the shirts in the mixture, um, if you're not wearing protection, it will dry out your skin and make your fingertips feel weirdly smooth, kind of like bleach does. So I like to take this opportunity to turn my shirts inside out. Uh, you don't have to do this step, but I like to. It just means that most mistakes I make while applying the dye are hidden on the inside of the shirt rather than the outside. When you drop these into the soaking liquid, I recommend squeezing and moving them around a little. We want to make sure the whole shirt is fully saturated in this mixture. Any dry spots will not absorb our powder dye, so it'll be really apparent if it's not fully soaked. To complete step one, we need to let this soak for 20 minutes, then squeeze them out. Our goal here is to not wring the shirts too hard. We want to avoid putting too much pressure on the shirt because it can end up snapping the threads in the seams that hold the shirt together. I've done this, it's not good it falls apart in the wash and uh, it's pretty disappointing. So we just want to hand squeeze these until no more drops of the mixture are coming out. And now we're ready to start layering our shirts. I use latex gloves for the next two steps because it protects my hands from any leftover soda ash mixture and it also makes it easier to keep the dye from staining my hands. I like to use this because they're thinner than the heavy duty gloves so it makes it easier to layer the shirts and handle the dye. So for this we'll need 5 to 7 foil forms for each shirt and a few small ones for the socks. I have a bunch already prepped 
but here is how you're going to ball them up. I try not to make them too small, but you can definitely experiment with the size of these to get some different results. I'm setting up the large blue shirt in this first bin. Um, first I grab my shirt and make sure it's face down. The dye on the back will come out a little differently than the dye on the front. I prefer what it looks like when I have them face down. You may like the other side more. So here I'm trying to evenly distribute these forms throughout the base of the shirt. I'm looking to get some lower points and some higher points where the dye can flow through. Keep in mind if you tuck any part of the shirt under the foil or if you pack the shirt really tightly with these forms, you'll have some areas that will likely stay white. It's going to be harder for the dye to flow if everything's really condensed in there. But this could be something you want to do intentionally on your shirts. It just depends on what you're going for. Okay, now for the socks. These are pretty straightforward. I just try not to pack them too tightly, but I am trying to give them a bit of a fold for the dye to do its thing. Here, I realize the socks are still folded the way I got them, which is on their side, so I like to unfold them so that the center is sort of facing upwards. Um, if they're folded on their side, they get a sort of mirror pattern, which is nice, but I like them this way. So on to the second shirt. Uh, you'll see I'm sort of shaking the shirt. This is to make sure it's as wrinkle-free as I can get it. If I start laying it in the basket with a lot of wrinkles, uh, the dye will take on those wrinkles. That's not something I want for this particular pattern, but I do use a more wrinkled setup on other patterns that I make. It's up to you. I think experimenting with some different colors and folding techniques can really change the results of your dye, which is definitely not always a, a bad thing. Okay, now we're ready for the fun part. Step three is applying the dye and ice. For this, we'll need our face mask, the teaspoon, and all of our dyes. Just cobalt blue for the first shirt. Right now is also when I take my ice out of the freezer. I do this right before I need it because if I bring it out too early, it starts turning into water and we only want that to happen after we layer it on top of our dye. We start adding water immediately with the ice, it will react differently. I may show that in another video, but that's not what we're going for on this one. We're starting with half a teaspoon of cobalt blue powder directly on this first shirt. I'm trying to be intentional in laying down the dye in four or five distinct areas on the shirt while keeping a good portion of it without dye. I really wish that my head wasn't blocking the entire application, but you will see it in a second. If we're too heavy handed here, the entire shirt will be blue, but I want there to be some contrast with lighter areas. so. I'm just applying it in thick lines. With the socks, I'm being more liberal. Um, I really want them to have some blue saturation all over. I've made the mistake with socks before um, going too light, and there's a lot of white areas, but I just want these socks to be really colorful. Okay, so immediately after the dye comes the ice layer. Here we are starting with the bigger freezer tray cubes, just distributing them evenly throughout. I usually do somewhere around a dozen of these per shirt. My thinking is that they'll melt at a different rate than the smaller cubes, so it just helps with creating contrast in the shirt. Then goes the smaller ones. Here we're looking to just cover all the fabric. I don't use a super heavy layer of ice because it tends to water down the colors. 
So I just want to make sure there's no fabric showing. That's enough. Here is our top layer of dye on the blue shirt. We're doing half of a teaspoon of cobalt blue powder. Um, we are more evenly distributing this. I want to get a good layer on top. Making sure that I get the sides and the corners because sometimes I neglect those areas and then we have a big old white patch. And then with the socks, just putting dye over that whole area, probably um, half of a teaspoon. Okay, so now we're doing our sunset inspired shirt where we're going sea glass and chocolate brown as our first bottom layer. I'm using a quarter to half of a teaspoon of chocolate brown. I just want some small, sort of heavy areas. Next is sea glass. I'm going to use about the same amount and I'm going to try to lay it pretty closely next to the brown so that um, they'll kind of accent the shirt together. Then our ice is the same deal as before. We're going to go bigger cubes on bottom and smaller cubes on top. All right, here's our final layer of dye. It's Cardinal Red. We are going to use a little bit more than a half of a teaspoon, about five eighths. And we're going to super evenly dust it all over the top of the ice because we want full coverage of that color, um, but we want it to be really light over the entire shirt. Now we let this bad boy sit for 20 hours. Okay, it's done. Here's what it looks like once the ice has melted. Now let's take them out for step four. Here we are at the final step. The first thing we want to do is rinse everything in room temperature water. So our goal here is to just rinse until the water begins to run almost completely color free and clear. Okay, on to the last shirt. We really want to make sure that we don't skip this step because rinsing in the room temperature water is going to help set the dye. Um, which is going to mean that it's going to be longer lasting and set properly. So try not to forget this step. Now we're ready for the hot water soak. Try to get this water as hot as you possibly can. We're going to fill up the sink or a basin like this and place our shirts in. Then drizzle a good amount of Dawn dish soap over the top. This is a very important step because it's getting rid of all of the dye on the shirts that didn't latch on to the shirt. So that dye is going to come out at some point. It's really good to get it out right now because we'll have a better idea of what the shirt is going to look like. And, and the colors will stay like they are now, wash after wash. This is now ready to go into the washer on permanent press with some textile detergent from Dharma. After that, you can throw it in the dryer on medium heat. We're on the other side of the wash cycle, so here are the finished shirts. First is the cobalt blue. I'm really happy with how this one came out. It has um, some darker splotches and a good amount of light areas. And it just has really good contrast and um, some nice blooms. Here's the second sunset inspired shirt. Um, I really like this one too. I wish there was more green, but it has all the colors that I wanted. Definitely not a calming sunset, but I like it. 
And as a bonus, here are the socks. Thank you for watching. See the description for a complete item list and some color corrected photos. There you can also find a link to my Etsy shop and Instagram. Hit subscribe and comment to let me know what you'd like to see in a future video.